Okay, thank you and good afternoon. Even though it's getting a bit darker, so I think I could bring some sunshine into this room. It's, so, uh, it's not so often when, when an external evaluator can, can actually say definitely yes. Definitely yes, there has been impact uh, raised by Finnish Open Science and Research Initiative. And we today also have heard that so much has happened in Finland so far. So I think it's good time to take a look at on, on at this initiative from this uh, perspective on, on impact especially. So uh, my background is, is in higher education and my, I started my career as a researcher on those days that we couldn't even dream about that someday data could be available from globally and you could actually use the data from elsewhere and, and make excellent research based, based on open science as, as a whole. So this holistic uh, structure has been something on which I will uh, discuss with you a bit, bit more. But what is most important is that uh, in this uh, impact evaluation we wanted to hear the target groups. So I concentrate on this presentation on external uh, target groups of this initiative, even though also the uh, uh, internal activities have been also evaluated. But uh, those are then on, on this report, which is today published. So uh, first of all, thinking about the framework for the uh, Impact evaluation, uh, the idea was to find the, top, uh, the direct impact of, of this Finnish initiative to the target groups. But at the same time, we know that there is this mega trend of, of openness and it has its impact also there. And also what we found out is that there are some drivers, if we want to create impact among your target troops in your country, then it's good to take into account that, as we today have discussed, the mindset of the organizations, the mindset of the researchers, the mindset of the top management level in, in these target groups is of importance. Because if you have only very close and narrow view on, on open science, then the thinking is more like instrumental. And, and the changes you do is more like that you do because it's a must. Because someone says that you need to take into account these parts of open science. But interestingly, as I had an opportunity to meet all of the target groups, even uh, many of the international organizations and their representatives, the discussion continued to think about what is the future of research, what is the future university, what is the future a research institute like, and what is the world even behind of or beyond open science. So this kind of long-term perspective is something to do with this kind of transformation on which we are actually living today. So uh, this can be seen also as, as one, one uh, main uh, uh, main driver of, of impact in, in, uh, in target groups. And so uh, during this short presentation, I will go through uh, some selected target groups and the impact uh, actually told by the target groups and their representatives. And I have made my own, maybe a simplified version of, or a picture or figure on, on how this impact can be seen today. And finally, I will actually end up giving some takeaways for you and, and some recommendations raised by this, this evaluation. So uh, first of all, the interest uh, is of importance if you want to make a transformation in, in is it on a national level or on, or on organizational level. So, and then the strategic level is the second step if you want to make a, a kind of sustainable uh, change. And then you need to take a look at on the operations. So this is a kind of um, change 
management model which was used in, in this evaluation. So we look on three levels of uh, impact and how this Finnish in initiative have affected on, on, the, on these levels on target groups. And as, uh, as a good frame for the evaluation, this roadmap was used. Because in this uh, leaflet, there are very uh, clear recommendations made for all of the target groups. But as we know that the target groups and especially higher education is autonomous of its uh, nature, so the change has to be made by the target groups. So how to make impact is, is an interesting question on this kind of uh, approach, which is very holistic. So uh, let's take a look at on, on, the, on the target groups. Uh, there you can see that we also wanted to hear uh, the grassroots level, the researchers and, and uh, all of the staff members in, in higher education, in university hospitals and research in institutes, we invited them to, to uh, a web brainstorming and I will very shortly present the, present the results. And then uh, we go to the organizational level, so research organizations uh, will be then uh, handled and then of course research funders, as heard today also, their role is of importance. Nas uh, uh, national stakeholders then innovation ecosystem actors and international organizations. So let's start on grassroots level. Uh, 365 researchers and staff members from all of the, these institutes uh, mentioned before. Actually, these respondents, they uh, actually the first touch to open science is on open publication. So 80, uh, 98 percent of, of staff members have some kind of contact. They have utilized open publications. And then we can also see that the next uh, effect is on, on open data. And uh, we can also estimate that this will be the next wave on the transformation towards open science to be used in, in research organizations. And this, this needs more in-depth discussion in, in the future. And we will see actually why. Uh, on this uh, brainstorming, we use data mining uh, on, on the discussions uh, well, gathered from these participants and the most discussed topic again was the data as such. And there was also quite strong agreement that data is of importance and this is of benefit for you in, in your work. And uh, there are also some other, other topics around. I will go them uh, more deeply uh, through next. So um, this uh, top five list is uh, actually created by, by all of these 365 participants on, on this web brainstorming. They together prioritized the uh, issues which are important for uh, them in their own uh, current daily tasks. So uh, we can see that researchers as actually discuss uh, on very practical issues which uh, help them in their daily work. They don't discuss about incentives that much. They don't discuss about funding that much. Of course, they discuss about that, but the, the prioritizing raises these issues to be the most important ones. So first access on and open publication, sharing and reuse of data, ethics and verification of results, infrastructures and international collaboration. Uh, then we can actually also see uh, through these results that there is still a lot to do on, on open science, thinking about uh, this, uh, this top five list, 
thinking about the discussions which is going on and thinking about uh, the wide range of this target group as such. In Finland there are about 30,000 or so uh, uh, staff members who do research and then if we take all of the educators in the field also and all the other staff members then the amount is much higher. So uh, on this grassroots level we also ask for these respondents how many have been in contact to this ATT initiative? Do they know the website or the web service of, of this uh, initiative? Uh, one third of the respondents, which may be seen as forerunners in open science in Finland today, didn't know uh, the initiative as such. So there is some effect from, from this overall mega trend, but there is still a lot to do on, on organizational level. But luckily, we can see that if you actually concentrate and focus on supporting the daily work of, of staff members, then you can start getting uh, also the impact and, and the organization is growing into to open science. And of course, after that, then it's important to think about the incentives and funding structures, resourcing and so on. So uh, how to do, uh, how to create impact, do good tools, provide the best services and ensure the competencies. And that is something what has been done by ATT initiative so far, but there is still issues to be done. Because if we take on this organizational point of view, uh, we uh, selected for this uh, evaluation process uh, research institutes from each of these maturity levels, uh, which are then also uh, evaluated by this initiative. We found out that uh, the impact was very strong on each of these levels in I those organizations which are also selected to be higher in, in this maturity level. And uh, also I had an opportunity to discuss with several of, of uh, the presidents and top management representatives of, on these organizations and, and uh, the message is quite, quite clear. If you have stated that, that open science is strategic as such, then you do also issues on that. You resource, you manage, you are not just committed, but you as a top manager are also involved in the processes. You want to ensure that this change happens in the organization because it's strategic. It may be the way to profile your institute. It may be the way to uh, create a kind of forerunner organization. In, in your country and in internationally. And also in th these organizations also the uh, collaboration and, and interaction with, with the initiative has been very strong. So, so the representatives from many fields of, of uh, the organization have been involved, I for example, in, in working groups of, of this initiative. So there's this kind of mutual uh, interaction. And uh, also we found on and it's stated also in the report that on the best cases also the organizations have not just taken the uh, ready-made solutions made by this initiative. Uh, they have tailored, let's say, the tools and services to, to be suitable in the sector or in, in the organization. And then the impact is, is strong and open science is, is uh, on the daily basis there in decision making and in all of the levels of organization. But of course these organizations and top management level says also that there's still a lot to do with, with uh, researchers, uh, not to mention the researchers only, but also the staff members, and not only the staff members, but also that all of the students should understand the open science and get this knowledge also. And that was also discussed today in, in previous discussions. 
But on the other side of the line, we found that uh, there is the, this group of, of research institutes in which the impact has not been strong yet, or uh, in positive cases, the impact has probably started or, or started already. But what was mentioned even uh, with the representatives of top management level, they actually are eager to hear whether this, because they are a bit skeptic on, on this issue. Is this important? Is this strategic? We need to have some evidence. So if you bring us best practices and uh, cases that prove that in our disciplines, open science has proven to be uh, uh, beneficial, then we may start to change our organizations. But on those cases also, we, uh, we heard that, as, as also there is stated, that the change have probably started already, even though the top management level is not thinking about this strategically, because the pressure may be quite strong. Maybe in, in the librarians who say and that they are so near the researchers and, and students that there's a pressure to open and think about services which uh, actually promote the open, open science as, as such. So uh, this is the situation today, and, and uh, it also shows us that there's strong need to, uh, or in the organizations as such, this kind of initiative can accelerate, can support, can provide tools and methods and help. But then the responsibility is, is there in, in the organization. And today we will actually hear more about this maturity level. So <laughs> this is the picture of the situation today. And also some, uh, of course, advice how to promote impact in the future. Research funders, we, we heard uh, today also that the role is a uh, uh, very, let's say, core role in, in open science. Money mothers, someone said today. So uh, the impact of ATT initiative is and has been strong among Finnish uh, research funders. There is one sector which is not that yet involved in, in the process and uh, it's uh, on, on uh, Finnish foundations, which are quite independent today, and they, there are already some recommendations that the discussion is, is there, but the in, uh, impact of this initiative is not that strong, I would say, yet. Uh, and there is, a, there is a wish and need to, to, uh, to more uh, uh, interaction and to more collaboration and discussion, and, and also some wish to, to get direct advice how to, to promote impact among these hundreds of, of foundations who are operating in the field. And they have different disciplines in the background and different actually kind of philosophical approach to research also. So this maybe is a bit more complex environment compared to, to Finnish Academy and, and, and Finnish Innovation Agency as such. So uh, how to create impact? The answer is to uh, continue the close uh, mutual interaction and, and that's think about solutions on, on funder uh, specific way also. National stakeholders, there were quite many uh, kind of associations or networks which operate on, let's say, on, on uh, uh, citizen uh, science uh, or uh, citizen involvement participation, for example, the impact has been strong. We can see that th there is this very close collaboration and the participants of these stakeholders are very closely collaborating together with, with the initiative, so the impact has been strong. And the advice is that just continue the way it has been. Innovation ecosystem is an another story. The, the first actions have been started by ATT initiative, but if we think about the, the goals of this initiative, the three pillars of it 
uh, concentrate on the academic and research process, and then there is one pillar on, on social uh, impact. Uh, the recommendation is that this uh, sector and the actors in, in the field, both SMEs and, and uh, larger companies with the industrial uh, organizations, there needs to be collaboration and interaction, thinking about how this initiative could support and, and create uh, the first the understanding of open science and then the benefits which can be found of open science. And it has been also said that there are actually new competencies needed on both sides, on, from academia and, and, and also uh, from company side. Uh, there's still a lot of lack of knowledge what, what is actually open science. And, and also I heard also discuss, uh, discussions and, and um, uh, also replies that say that there's still a lot of misunderstanding of this concept in, in, in the sector. So that would be the first, first step to, to raise the level of knowledge and then start to collaborate. International organizations, uh, I had a very uh, good opportunity to discuss with the uh, trains of uh, international organizations, OECD, European Commission, UNESCO, uh, uh, Nordforsk and so on, and quite many of you who are here have been also <laughs> discussing the topic. Uh, we heard that Finland is probably a flagship uh, today on open science and, and that uh, came also from these discussions that the impact on this interest level, ATT initiative have raised interest, the uh, impact is strong. Uh, on policy level we can find actually concrete uh, examples on which uh, the impact has been on in this sense medium strong and on, on operational level already some. Uh, evidence has been found. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, also the conceptualization of ATT initiative have been asked from Finland. This uh, transformational uh, uh, process is something which could be also disseminated or maybe even sold to, to other countries. And that needs, of course, discussion and interaction and collaboration. Conclusions. I would say that ATT initiative has been a success story so far, even though there is variation between uh, the impact on, on several levels of, uh, of impact and, and in target groups. But uh, the initiative has been a dynamic multi-actor and multi-level facilitator and accelerator of open science. And impact can be found on all of these three levels. And as said, the uh, focus could be on, on during the last year of this initiative on, on this grassroots level. And uh, also to, uh, to give some takeaways, some, uh, of course, all of you who participated in the interviews and uh, has replied to inquiries, also the ideas for the future were asked. The first one uh, is that Finland should be more active in international forums because this initiative has so much to give also and, and there, there could be uh, new ways to, to collaborate also. And also it has been said that Finland could be kind of uh, country of experimentation of open science and then the uh, experiences and results could be then disseminated also in the future. Specific actions to activate researchers and staff members, still uh, some need for the 30,000 staff members, not to mention the was it 20 million researchers in the world, so to say. And the, the collection of best practices have been uh, wished uh, and uh, of course guidelines also for the organizations how, what they should do in order to uh, be more involved in, in open science. And then finally special attention towards open innovation. 
collaboration with ecosystem actors and uh, uh, for example I would like to finalize the, the word heard from one SME owner who said that they could actually give also something to open source not to be kind of focus groups only but active members of this community. Okay, I think I have used my time, so the complete report is available now at uh, the website of this initiative. And also I would like to mention that uh, the qualitative data of this web brainstorming is also open. And, and you could see, if you would like to see how the researchers and th staff members have actually uh, stated about how important uh, open science is for them and what are the most important topics. Take a look at on, on the data too. So, thank you.